You're about to see a series of dramatic reconstructions of serious rail accidents in which S&T staff lost their lives. These reconstructions are based on the available facts, although in some cases, nobody will ever know exactly what happened. I was five to seven. I was in bed. I was awake because I was expecting Brian home. And the doorbell rang. And I just thought it was strange because Brian always knocks the back door. From their eyes, he's frightened of waking the kids up. And um, before I got out of bed, I knew Brian was dead. I knew it wasn't him ringing the bell. The sleep. Maybe I'll last an hour, uh, and then I'll suddenly wake. And all I see is how I can only describe as a, a big yellow dot coming towards me. That's all I see. I, I don't... It's just a big yellow dot, I, I think. I remember all the time. Um, and then I have to get up. I'll walk around, pace about. And, and, and chew up and get it out of my mind. And then I'll try to sleep again. Uh, but it's very, very hard. It's very hard to forget. For S&T, the 1990s started tragically. Six staff were killed while working on the tracks. It's hard to believe that these accidents could happen, but they did. What we have to do is learn from these tragedies and make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Alan's team were faulting at, uh, on the Woking district, and they got a call from Woking Box. Hello, s &T. can I help you? I have a blank aspect out on WA488. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll sort you out. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm late. I'll try to catch a train today, mate. Hey, you're here just in time. Come on, we've got a signal for Let's move. Right. Come on, shut up. They got away from Woking. Um, unfortunately, they went to the wrong place in the first instance, was it? Was it Maybury? WA488. Where the hell is it? Then they made another mistake and went to the bridge at Byfleet, which was the wrong one. Grab that. After they clambered down the bank at the bridge at, at uh, Shearwater, and walked to the yeah. signal there, which was the wrong one. Bollocks, it's the wrong one as well. Look, we're going to have to try the signals on the platform, all right? Look, I ain't far. Look, Sam, you, you, you grab the van, all right? Um, drive it down to the station and we'll meet you there, all right? Okay. They decided then to send Sam back to Byfleet with the van and that they would walk back. Uh, so the three, the other the remaining three, walked back the track towards Byfleet Station wondering where the hell they were, really, beginning to get quite disorientated. And they arrived at West Byfleet Station to find that they were still in the wrong place. Oh, I don't friggin' believe it. it ain't this one either. Well, I'm bugging if I know where 488 is. Uh, so the three walked back the track and met Sam, who was coming down the platform. And I believe he saw a train on the up local, which was far in the distance, which he considered he was safe for. Um, he waited for the passage of a train on the up-fast. He then walked behind the train on the up-fast and straight into the pathway of a train which is going on the down-fast. So he didn't have a chance. He didn't have a chance.
incident commenced about 20 to 4 in the morning when the signalman was obviously wanting to have an intercity train from the sidings into Liverpool for one of the early morning starts. Now, coming out of the sidings, there is what is known as two crossover roads, which also pass under a rather wide overbridge. And the signalman, of course, tried to get um, both crossover roads. He got one crossover road, but couldn't get the second one. His first thought was to ring his colleague at Liverpool Lime Street. Hello, Lime Street. It's a jail box here. I've lost two four fives in reverse. I've got uh, flashing out of correspondence. I've got five eight nine standing at uh, one three five waiting to get off. But he goes through I've the procedure then uh, of telling the control that he needs the fault team up to come up and have a look at these particular points. And sure enough, this must have been about a quarter to four time now. And within two or three minutes, right. the fault team yeah, okay. were turning right. out in their van to come up to Edge Hill. And the fault team arrive right behind the signal box. There is a, a, an area behind the signal box where they can park their van. But in the meantime, unknown to them, the signalman has got his points. They go through the bridge, underneath the bridge, to the points where the signalman said he couldn't get detection because they know the layout. Well, this end looks OK. He's got them reversed and locked. It must be the B end. So right. having seen one end were fitting, they must have decided then to walk to the other end to see were they all right. The driver, having had the signal cleared for him on the intercity empties, just dropped down very slowly, because this was an accident at just barely 10 miles an hour. Then we know, of course, at the same time as he was coming out of the sidings, and of course this is where fate falls at times, we have two on-track machines. Of course, they're usually fairly well lit, there's lights around them, they're very noisy, and of course the driver of the intercity train dropping down would not be using any amount of power, and of course with the on-track machines at that moment passing, we can only assume that that drowned the noise or anything of the train suddenly coming on top of the men. locomotive the driver was in, the cab it were fairly high up. He said he felt that he heard something yeah, metallic. Both those on track machines went into uh, a real station where they were crossed back out again by the signalman. The leading man in the leading unit, he saw what he said he thought was a bundle of rags. They had to reverse now into the sidings of that yield. The supervisor dropped off and walked across to have a look. The signalman now, still not aware of what had happened, and the points were still being laying towards Liverpool, allowed Reg Fletcher on the second train of MTs for Liverpool to be cleared and for him to drop down towards Liverpool. The next thing I seen was uh, the supervisor of the tamper machine put his hands up. So I slammed the brakes on skidded to a halt and I've seen three or well, two bodies and one very badly injured man in the middle of the track. Two men apparently were already dead. The third, uh, I understand, died on the way to hospital. And that just about sums up an accident that took about 20 minutes from start to finish. The three men dead at the end of it. And of course, it naturally has its effect on people who see this sort of thing at close quarters, um, and particularly drivers. I felt very upset, really upset. That, you know, that you say to yourself, was there something you could possibly have done? But um, 
You know what I mean? I, I must admit, I, I went home, I just sat in the chair and I was crying for about an hour, two hours. We arrived on site, then we uh, walked out on a site to do our work, carrying a ladder and two tins of paint, which is an undercoat and a finishing paint. We got on with the work, and when it was time for lunch, we walked back along the track, we walked over the uh, bridge, I'm gonna go back to then the we had our lunch over on the drain just over there, it, as it happened to be a very fine day. Barry walked on ahead of me. I was just packing away my lunch bag. We had to climb over a stile. And now I saw Barry walking in the forefoot. And I was just about to mount the steps and I saw this train coming. Barry, what's that train? I said, Barry, look, there's a train coming. Get it out the way. And he tried to ease himself up on the parapet. Barry! What's that train? He had tried to sit on the centre parapet of the bridge and was either sucked or possibly his coat had was caught and pulled him into, I think it was the third carriage of the train. Barry, what's that train? Then after the train had passed, when I tried to look for him, I showed it Barry, and Barry! of course I saw Barry! no sign of it. Next thing I saw a, a shoe by the parapet. As the immediate supervisor, I had to come to the site. I had to identify the body, assist with the clearing of the body from the site. He had uh, virtually minus one foot, and uh, he had just been disemboweled. Uh, some slight markings around the head and face. Well, it's affected me very badly, and, and i still got thoughts of it now. I still think of it. I mean, he was uh, a very devoted husband, and he'd often spoken well of his wife. is Harriet. She was 10 months last Monday. She'll never know her dad. Never. Only what we tell her. I got no normal detection and 845 points out. Patex, yeah, yeah, yep. Sorry, lads, we haven't got time. Eight, four, five points have failed. Come on then. Anyway, this looks disgusting. I made Brian sandwiches, and uh, he played football for an hour in the garden, and then with Jack, he went to work at about five o'clock, and that was the last I saw of him. Is this the nearest access? Yeah, I reckon so. We'll have to get this sorted quick. We'll have a look. Yes, test carried out. OK, God. Thank you very much. I spoke to him later on in the night on the phone, about nine o'clock. Um, he was arranging to get time off work because his brother was coming down for the weekend. And um, it was the last time I spoke to him. told me that he'd, he'd gone to the wrong points and 
He was speaking to a man on the panel on a portable phone, and he apparently said... Can you try the points, mate? Can you try 845, John, please? No normal than 845. And there's no normal, Brian. Yeah, just leave him like that. I've got the 2315 Paddington to Reading coming down, and he's far as the slough. I've got the 2315 Paddington to Reading coming down, and he's far as the slough. I'll only be a second. He apparently said, uh, leave the points as they were. I'll only be a few minutes. I'll only be a second. Brian, watch out, Brian! And then the man on the panel heard the train go by, and Brian was dead. Brian, watch out, Brian! Jack is my son. He only, he's only three. I couldn't tell him. I've never to this day told him his dad's dead. I told him uh, that he wouldn't be coming home. He's gone to live in heaven now, because he's a special man and he's needed in heaven now. He used to um, hit me and tell me to go and get his dad. Tell me I was horrible not letting his dad come home. And then he sort of calmed down a bit. He carries a picture around all the time when we're indoors tell him whoever's there, this is my daddy. And um, the last time he really spoke about his dad was yesterday morning, early hours of the morning. He sort of woke up in bed, sat up. He just said, I haven't seen you for ages, daddy. And then just lay back down and went to sleep. to anybody again never I hope people or any man that works on the route or woman that fact just takes proper precaution proper safety precautions so it never happens again I had the action as far as I could see through a, a momentary lapse of, of concentration and that's all it takes to have an accident have you got any messages Nicole for and the other staff who work on the tracks, who think this could never happen to me. Oh, it can. It can happen to them. And they've got to think safety all the time. It can happen to Brian. It can happen to anybody. Just never let your guard down. Never. I never thought anything would happen to him. 